guys, it is Cara the Bubble Lush. So today um, I am 22 weeks and I wanted to, I guess, talk about what's been going on the past week, which really honestly isn't much. <laughs> Um, I've been feeling the baby a lot. They, he has been kicking every day, um, really low, <laughs> really low. And he's been stretching in weird ways. And, and he's starting, I think, to get um, big enough that he, sometimes he'll like contort my stomach a little bit. So it's weird. <laughs> this pregnancy is going by really, really quickly. So, um, but it's fun. It's it's pretty exciting. Um, I've had lots of people ask if we have picked a name and if we're just like hiding it and we haven't shared it yet. We have narrowed down our list to two names. Um, Chris is trying to throw in a third option because it's it's grown on him. Uh, he's not grown on me. <laughs> so anyways, we are stuck between two names and the problem is one day I will love like name A, we'll say, um, love everything about it, think it's super, super cute, and then the next day I'm like, oh, but I love name B. It's perfect. So I, I honestly do not know if we are going to settle on a name before this baby is born or if it's going to be one of those things where we look at him and we're just like, you're name A or you're a name B. Like, we don't know. So, <laughs> so um, that's kind of a, it's different. Um, we knew I mean, the second that the ultrasound tech told us it was a girl, we knew the name was going to be Hannah. Um, we were very, very firm on the names, and like I said, this time around we were very firm on a girl's name, but we were still debating on a boy's name, and to this day we are still debating. So, so Chris and I both really like the names. It's not that we're trying to convince um, each other, <laughs> and sometimes Chris will throw out the, the name to kind of like see how it feels, kind of like test the water and see how I react to it, and um, I just don't know. I, I'm not, I guess I'm not ready to like pull the trigger yet. So that's kind of a big difference and kind of weird. I wish we had something to call him. Um, I've just kind of been referring to him as little man. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so besides that, one thing that I am really kind of surprised that I'm getting a lot, a lot of pushback and questions and, um, interest in <laughs> is a couple of videos ago I mentioned that um, Hannah and this baby are going to share the nursery and I got some really rude messages um, really rude and then just a lot of general inquiries of like why <laughs> so I figured I could address that in a video and um, one I, I I do, we would never do anything to jeopardize Hannah or harm Hannah or um, harm this baby, and so I don't I, I don't really know where some people's anger is coming from. Um, but let I just let's look at what we experienced with our first baby. Um, we had the nursery completely set up. We had a changing table in here, a um, a crib, closet full of clothes, um, the glider. And the baby ended up, Hannah, um, ended up co-sleeping in either a Moses basket, a bassinet, or a pack and play until she was six months old. I was breastfeeding and I was working and, the, and it was bad enough that I had to wake up in the middle of the night to, to nurse the baby and then still get up at four in the morning. Um, but I didn't want to like have to actually really get out of bed, go across the room, pick the baby up, set in the glider. So it was just easier for me to set up in bed, um, take the baby from the bassinet, breastfeed it, and then put the baby back to sleep right right there. Um, so co-sleeping in that respect, or kind of sidecarring, or whatever you want to call it, um, worked really, really well for us the first six months. And then once Hannah hit about six months, she was starting to sleep the vast majority of the night. I think sometimes she woke up at like one or something, but she was only waking up like once in the middle of the night. And so we tested her out in their crib and she did really well and we just started that transition. So for the first six months, she, the only time she was in her nursery was to get her diaper changed. And, um, and so from six months to two years where she is now, uh, the only time she is really spent in her room is sleeping, getting dressed, getting her diaper changed, and just recently, 
<laughs> like just recently in the past couple months. Um, she has her, I'm, I'm in her nursery right now, so I'm looking at it. She has her play kitchen and um, she kind of comes back here and she plays by herself and I walk down the hall and kind of check on her. But um, she's not, she doesn't like use this room as a playroom. Uh, this room is just used to sleep in. And actually now we have completely taken out the changing table and it's in the bathroom which works really well with cloth diapers because um, there was, we had a big space for the changing table. Our bathroom was kind of set up weird. So there was just just big open space and it was per it like perfectly fit a um, diaper pail and the changing table. It was like meant to be. Um, and that way I can change her. I can spray the diaper off and put it in the diaper pail and it's all like contained in the bathroom. I don't have dirty diapers in the bedroom anymore. So that kind of makes sense, right? Um, so now in her room, listening to her. She sounds so funny in there. Um, she has a crib. She has a toddler bed. Um, she doesn't really sleep in the crib anymore. She's, she's like 99% in the toddler bed. She has a bookshelf, a glider, and her play kitchen. And, uh, you know, as she gets older, she'll probably start spending more independent time in here. But <laughs> this baby is probably not going to spend any time at all his first six months in this nursery. Um, we're going to bring in a dresser, a kind of a low six drawer dresser, and um, then we're gonna split the closet. So half of, you know, they're gonna split a dresser and split the closet, and the changing table's not in here, and I don't really use the glider when I'm nursing. I nurse in bed or I nurse um, out in the living room, and we actually might bring the glider into the living room, we've talked about that, different ways to kind of move around the furniture. And so even though this would be like a shared nursery, uh, the baby wouldn't spend any time in here for the first six to eight months. And then when it did spend time in here, it would just be sleeping. Um, Hannah is actually a very good sleeper. And if it, if, you know, who knows what this baby's gonna be like, but um, if it poses a problem where, you know, the baby is waking up Hannah or anything like that, then we can look at, um, losing the guest room and you know separating them and having Hannah have her own room and this baby having his own room but um, right after the birth of this baby we're gonna have family coming in from out of town whenever my mom comes up my mom will be up here for the birth um, probably my dad as well they use that guest room um, our guest room gets used actually quite a bit and so if we lose that guest room then we're making people sleep down you know in on futons, <laughs> on futon downstairs, and that's not very nice for the people that are like coming from states away to come visit us. Um, and we would be doing that for a, a nursery that was not being used because the baby's sleeping in our room. Do you know what I mean? So that, in effect, that's why they're going to be sharing a nursery. Really, we're just going to leave the crib where it is. We're going to leave the toddler bed where it is, and we're just going to add a dresser, and we're going to add his wardrobe. To the mix. So I was kind of surprised when I got a lot of pushback about it because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. <laughs> um, you know, when Hannah is five and this baby is three, then yeah, they're probably going to have separate rooms. Um, hopefully we'll have an, another baby by then and then whatever gender that is, they'll share a room. And so eventually we know that we're going to end up losing our guest room up here and we'll have to make something work with the den, um, either a sleeper sofa or something. But for right now, um, it just kind of seems illogical to lose a guest room for a nursery that's not going to be used because we're gonna close sleep. So I hope that kind of answers your question. That's kind of like my long rambly, why share a nursery spiel. Um, we're probably going to paint. I'm not sure. I don't, that's the other thing. I don't know how like manly to make this room because it's, we don't know if he's going to stay in here because like I said, if he is a super colicky baby, oh my God, knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, please, please don't. Um, if it's an issue and he's, you know, crying in the middle of the night, then maybe Hannah will stay here and, you know, little man will take over the guest room and 
Um, so it, there's no point in painting. So I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to start a Pinterest board about shared <laughs> nurseries because there's actually quite a few out there. Um, a lot of good examples of either gender neutral or um, like let's say I painted the room like a really pretty teal, like like this kind of color, teal. Um, and then I could do his accents like um, blues and oranges and browns or whatever to kind of like pull off that teal and then Hannah's would be like pinks and blues and oranges, something like that, you know, so it's kind of like a kind of a manly take on a color scheme and a girly take on a color scheme, but they complement each other. I was looking at doing something like that, but um, I just don't know how much, I guess, effort it's going to be, is going to be put in it because the, <laughs> he's not really going to even inhabit this room for the first six months of his life. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, for this time around, we actually got an arm's reach co-sleeper. I got it at a consignment event, ooh, I think when Hannah was like a year old. So we're gonna be using that this time around and I'm really, really excited about it because it's going to be um, level or very close to level with our bed instead of the pack and play, which was a little weird and super bulky in our room. The arm's reach co-sleeper is going to be more compact and it's going to fit better. So we're excited for that and uh, I think we're just going to kind of play it by ear. You know, we're not trying to like put our children out or not provide for them or something. <laughs> I think anyone that has seen Hannah's nursery tour knows that like I put lots and lots and lots of love into this nursery and that um, it would just take a couple little tweaks to make it work for both of them if that's what ends up happening. But I don't really want to jump the gun and then end up, you know, not having them share a room or whatever happens. So I think we're just going to wait a little bit longer and kind of see how we need to adjust um, as our family grows. You know what I mean? Um, as he gets here and as we see his personality and as we see how Hannah reacts to him and kind of how they grow together, then we can kind of see how well this arrangement is going to work out. But right now it's just going to be an addition of a dresser and his clothes and, you know, that's about it. So um, I'll do a belly shot because you guys will not even believe it. I think the last belly shot I did was 18, 19 weeks, one of those, and I'm not 22. So let's push this away, push this back. Okay, so this is actually where Hannah's toddler bed is, and she has taken over her um, Moses basket, and that's where she keeps all her stuffed animals. So I'm backed up as far as I can. <laughs> this is not a um, maternity tank top. My shirt is not long enough. <laughs> so anyways, um, that is the 22 week belly shot and kind of a little more information on what sharing a nursery means to me. And I guess if you have any questions, feel free to let me know what they are. Um, I don't have another midwife appointment for like two weeks, I think. And uh, nothing else is really kind of going on. It's kind of just at a cool, chill place. The baby is definitely letting me know that he's okay by kicking all the time. And um, Hannah started to kiss my tummy, kiss the baby brother, and so that is super sweet really really sweet um, we're getting further along on trying to find a doula and we're talking about whether or not we want to do like a another birthing class type of thing but I don't know I guess we'll we have to talk about that a little bit more so anyways I, uh, I guess we'll talk to you later <laughs>